MNT game review. With Leo out in the South American forests to jungles to retrain himself and become a better leader, the turtles have to take day jobs and Wrath becomes the night watcher without the other turtles knowing and dishes out some vigilante justice. Meanwhile, Max Winters, a corporate executive, has some connections to monsters suddenly roaming the city. Yeah, the plot is the same as the movie and, you know, you either like it or you don't. The the overall plot is basically the same as in the movie, although for some reason both Casey Jones and April O'Neil make no appearances whatsoever. I guess they just didn't want to make them playable, which I can kind of understand. I'll get into that on the kind of the whole gameplay. But there's I think there's maybe one mention of Casey in the dialogue, and that's it. The dialogue has to be mentioned. This is clearly a children's game. The turtles do not stop talking, pretty much. Basically, the entire game is as if it's being retold, you know, it already happened, and it's being retold with the four turtles and Master Splinter sitting down together and talking over what happened. So, every couple of minutes, at least one of them makes some comment, and the writing is not good. The basic theme of the story is family unity, and only together are the turtles strong, and it is just hammered home just painfully. And add to that in the first couple of levels where they, you know, have the whole tutorial thing as many games have, they constantly pause the game even during really annoying moments, you know, because it pauses and then you're told some directions. Not all the directions pause the game, but a bunch of them do, and it is just really annoying. Because it's not just the first time you play that level, it's every time you play that level. Some of the levels, you have access to all four turtles, at least once you unlock them. Much of the time, you have to do well, and just, you know, basically not get hurt too much, and stuff like that. And you'll gradually unlock the other turtles as you progress through the levels. The levels range between taking, you know, under 10 minutes to, I think the very last one takes about half an hour, but most of them are, you know, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, or less. And there's 16 of them. It's not a long game, but it does have some replayability to it, especially with the unlockables. Some of the levels have all four turtles, some of them only one, and it always you know, makes sense, like it's what happened to this character. Some of them actually take place at the same time, you know, while Leo is roaming the jungles, Raph is out at the night, as the Night Watcher, and while Michelangelo is dressed up as a turtle to entertain kids, yeah, this didn't make that much sense in the movie either, or it's at least a goofy idea anyway, Don is roaming the sewers for spare parts. Some of the time the combat just gets kind of... it's you, you, you're wondering why am I fighting these people and what are they even doing here? There, there's actual fights in the sewers, for example. And sometimes the, the like nat natural hazards of the levels just don't make a lot of sense. There's toxic waste on top of a building in New York. I know New York's dirty, but that dirty? Anyway, the basic gameplay, you're either gonna love it or hate it. Basically, it depends on if you like the, you know, Prince of Persia, the newer games, especially the Sands of Time trilogy. It's basically that. You know, you could say they cannibalized it, but at least it is Ubisoft who's behind both. And they did change it, whereas Prince of Persia has a lot of focus on just figuring out where to go also. And, you know, a kind of more quiet, more 
solemn tone to it. This is more energetic, more more fast-paced, actually. And that's not to say that it's not fast in The Prince of Persia, but it is in a somewhat different way. And in this, you also really don't have to figure out where to go. It's basically, it's really straightforward, and it's extremely linear also. Basically, you're, you know, running across walls, you're jumping from pole to pole, through New York, under New York, in, you know, various areas of New York. There's a construction yard, there is, you know, a corporate building or two, you know, a flaming house that I'm not sure how the fire got started and you don't actually put out the fire, but anyway. And it makes a lot of sense, really. It's basically, if you watch the flippy jump whoosh sound teaser trailer for the TMNT movie and thought, I want to play that, then this is your game. And that's really how simple it is. If you if you think that sounds dumb, then don't get the game, because that's all it is. It's you know Prince of Persia-style gameplay. And it actually does make a lot of sense for the turtles to move like that, you know, at least, especially, you know, with... It's what they do in the animated movie, really. You know, they move like that a lot. The camera has some nice stuff to it, you know, especially during the power attacks. When you have more than one turtle, you can do, you know, power-up attacks with them. All four have one power-up attack each, and basically the thing with it is you have to be standing still for a few seconds while you hold down the key activating the power attack, so you have to not get hit then it'll do the power attack, and you have to actually hit someone with the power attack, or it'll cost you, you know, family unity and all that. The... there's no real... you can die in the game, in quotes, you'll just start from, you know, the most recent checkpoint. Again, the game, it's, it's very dynamic, you're just constantly moving through the levels. At the end of each level, you'll be graded on how good you did at the fighting, which is basically just were you hit and how many times were you hit if you were. You know, to get a perfect rating, don't get hit at all, which is also something I personally think is really cool. That makes really good sense. You know, if you're a really good ninja fighter, I guess, you don't get hit. And, you know, you can brag with that. You can say, you know, I completed that game, that level in the game, without getting hit. It grades you based on how quickly you move through the level. And it grades your family unity, which gets really annoying, because sometimes, even though it's really not the best way to defeat the enemies, you have to use the power attacks. But, yeah. When you attack, the amount of times... There's, I don't know, maybe a count of ten or something. If you hit... If you kill 10 enemies in a row without getting hit yourself at all, you will get this kind of countdown of how long you can kill with one hit. And it's every enemy you hit during that time will die with one hit and add back to the meter. So you can keep that going for a really long time if you can keep hitting the enemies, you know, without spending a lot of time. Also, if you hold down your attack button for a couple of seconds, your turtle will do a specific stance, and when you let go, he will rush back and forth, hitting every enemy in the area once. Every battle is, by the way, you know, limited to a certain location, somewhat like in Prince of Persia, The Sands of Time. You can't run away from a fight ever. Other than the one main attack, basically, the more times you hit the attack button, there's only the one, you will do combos, and that's about it. There is also a dodge key, which, if used with the directional keys, can be used to roll, and then there's a kick key, and you can also charge up the kick and do a bunch of kicks in a row. And the, the dodge key works quite well. Basically, as long as you hold it down, your turtle will dodge. Although not everything, not arrows and other 
thrown items, so you still have to watch out for those. And anyway, it doesn't matter that much to be able to dodge all the time. No matter what, the combat is easy. At worst, you're going to maybe get hit a bunch of times during combat, but it's nearly impossible to lose. In this game, it is nearly impossible to lose. Again, children's game. The focus is on doing well, you know, improving how well you complete a level and then getting more turtle shells, which can be used to unlock. There are some cheats and there's a bunch of, you know, artwork and animated cutscenes and such. I didn't personally think they were all that compelling, but, you know. The voice acting is decent enough. The story is kind of awkwardly told as far as, you know, the story of the movie goes. And if you haven't watched the movie, I'm not sure you're going to get that much out of the story of the game. And some levels just really do feel weird and useless. I, several times you, as Leo, have to find Raph. And, you know, he Raph just keeps running away. You'd think that he'd learn after the first time or they felt they made their point after the first time. I guess they didn't have that many concepts for levels. But hey, this is one of the, like, two licensed video games that actually don't completely suck. You know, the other one being the original Aladdin game released. You know, yeah, obviously concurrently with the movie, the animated Disney movie. The enemies are... There are a lot of foot ninjas, and this is some of the most... That's some of the most fun to fight. You do also fight some of the monsters, and there are boss battles. And the boss battles are reasonable. Other than, you know, Foot Ninja, you sometimes fight a couple of gangs, and yeah, this is where it gets a little weird. And some of these gangs apparently hang out on New York City rooftops. But yeah, you do, you know, run across rooftops in New York, just like in the, the teaser trailer. All in all, the game... If you like, I personally love the Prince of Persia gameplay, and if you like that sort of thing, you're probably going to like this game in spite of the aspects of it that make it kind of annoying. And you might find yourself just, you know, replaying levels several times. Do note there's only the one difficulty setting, and once you've mastered a level, there's nothing to go back there for. You know, there are no other secrets. The only collectibles are coins, which you just get raided on, and the turtle shells. There are five turtle shells that you can find in each level other than the turtle shells you add, you, you earn by getting good ratings, grades. And, oh, and this uses a couple of the cutscene, a couple of cutscenes ripped directly from the movie, and sometimes they just don't make any sense at all, where they, they you know, because they sort of altered the story a little bit to make it work for the game also, you know, because there needs to be a lot of combat in the game, obviously. One nice thing also is that every single level has a challenge, challenge level to go with it. So, again, 16 challenge levels, and these are basically, they vary in difficulty of, uh, you know, how easy they are to get through, but all of them, again, you're graded on how fast you do it, and you can earn a, tur a total of three turtle shells for doing it fast enough. And that's a lot of fun. Some of them are just really easy, like if you can do the whole, you know, running on walls and the acrobatics thing of Prince of Persia gameplay, you're not going to have any trouble with some of them, but others are really, really difficult. Basically, some of them have a real trick to them, and you have to think, you know, okay, what is really the fastest way to get to the end? Should I take a shortcut, maybe? But they're just a lot of fun. Again, if you like that kind of gameplay, that's really what this game kind of stands or falls on. So, yeah. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.